Huh? And uh, now a big step into the year 1944. Uh, actually, our students started with some new modern techniques. It was impressive. The students organized themselves and said, okay, we would like to have a little change. So we do, we start with problem-based learning. So they trained, they got some training as uh, tutors and they started on their level. And I know exactly in 1996 or 97, uh, some of this group, they approached me and said, listen, we do a quite well job, but actually this should be something being done by the professors. And actually I was the first one who agreed, and then I told Ernie because I was a knowledge about it, and I started the first group, and I had it in immunology, and uh, I invited those who would like to do so, it was on a, on a, on a free base, and uh, so I had students from the second semester, I had students from the last clinical year, so it was a good mixture of all, everybody, and it was very interesting to start, and so I could learn uh, in practice over the time. Then, again, the students together with the dean, because we still have the distance at the professor level, <coughs> they uh, initiated two, in the two international conferences on new methods in teaching and learning medicine. This was very surprising. So the first professors came in, they were all invited, but only a few came, students, uh, uh, had invited international renowned scientists in this field and they did it and it was very, very convincing. And then in 97 we started integrating PBL into the curriculum and then uh, 30 lecturers and professors, they went to the Harvard Medical School to be trained in different aspects of medical education. And then we did uh, in a, a group the curriculum development in the two years, 1999 and 2001. In 2001 it was uh, established, so another uh, group went to Boston for a so-called physician educator program. And then uh, actually what we thought is very important from the very beginning is that we train our professors and lecturers in modern techniques of education. This is still not done in all faculties, medical faculties, and by far not done for other faculties. But this proved to be very important because we all, we experience a uh, good curriculum in medicine and physics or whatever, but actually we are not trained to be a professor and lecturer. So actually we also needed training on this. So we started with 40 uh, professors and lecturers with the first <coughs> course uh, close in a, in a city close to Heidelberg, one week away from the university, day and night sitting together and having a, a program which we had developed, developed before. So this was the education, the situation, as I mentioned briefly before, the Heidelberg students reached very high rankings in high stakes exams, national parks, but there was a growing critical discussion about question of relevance of the content. This has a section also of lecturers on the one side and students on the other side. So there was a kind of, of uh, uh, almost revolution or a university. We need a change. So what was, uh, we did an, uh, an external assessment. This is very important. Um, you should not only assess those things, evaluate the things inside your faculty. You should seek for external advisors. So the content relevance, if this was an assessment with the students, was not considered very actual. The lecturer competence in some part was questioned. So there were some lecturers, obviously the students either didn't like how they teach it. The interdisciplinary organization of the content was really very bad. So they said, oh, you are teaching anatomy in the first semester. Please tell me what is the relevance for my clinical part of my education. So this was uh, the, the, the questions with <coughs> medical history, treatment planning was considered very well, self preparation, self guided learning was not considered very well. So many good possibilities and prerequisites for improvement. So what were our goals? Increase of practical relevance, increase of communication skills and social competence, increase of intrinsic motivation and initiative of the students, the integration of the faculties scientifically oriented profiles, and that is very oriented to science, 
adaptation to international standards. And you know that we are now uh, more and more merging together in Europe, globally as well, but Europe in the European Union with many states. So there's a harmonization of the medical and other education as well. What we want to have is that our students can easily move from Germany to England, to Italy, to Spain, do some of their courses there, get the credit points there, return to our university and finish the study and vice versa. Student exchange, national and international. So how is our curriculum built up? So we have preclinical studies and we have a, a module system. That means we divide all our students in a couple of groups and they rotate. So for example, in the third year, we have five modules, so five times 60 students, and they start, for example, with pharmacology, then they continue to pathology, continue to microbiology, immunology, they continue to, to uh, tropical medicine and, and healthcare systems and biome biometrics and so on. And so they stay in these four weeks, and then they rotate to the next one. So we have five times 60 students sitting in front of us teaching immunology, microbiology, doing the examination, and then we continue with the next group. Then they move on in the fourth year to the first, we call it clinical block, and we divide this group of 300 or 360 students by two, and they go again, are divided in six modules. So there are small groups actually, and small groups is a, has a great advantage. You get a lot of workload, not to forget that it also has some negative effect. It uh, uses a lot of personnel, but the students are in small groups and it's much more extensive. And after half a year, they switch both, and then they go in what we call the so-called clinical block two, the surgery. This is different, again, six modules in different aspects of surgery. And then there's an explanation week at every of these modules, and then they continue in the so-called clinic block three and four, again divided in two parts. So there are some other subjects like neurology, psychology, ophthalmology, ENT, and dharma, and so on. And on the other side, figurative, gynecology, and so on and so on. After this, they change after half year again. And then they have what we call practical year after being filled with theoretical and first clinical uh, um, um, experience. They go to clinics, not only in Heidelberg, they can divide it, they can go for four months to any clinic, also internationally, and many students do it. And I've heard that also some of the German st uh, students are coming to Khartoum. And then after this, uh, there is an, an, the general last examination. So by setting up this curriculum, and in contrast to the previous traditional curriculum, we set aside 10 months where the students could do their scientific work. So every student is able to do to start a thesis, an MD, PhD thesis, which then will be continued for most of them after they have finished the curriculum. <coughs> so, 14 weeks interdisciplinary medicine in general, just to give you one example, internal medicine, family medicine, clinics, it should be clinical chemistry, uh, are joined, have joint exams for these disciplines. In addition, we have clinical pharmacology, so where the basic pharmacology is merging into the clinical application. Geometry, which is very important in our aging society. And the cooperation, cooperation with professors, lecturers from surgery, for pathology, radiology was really tremendously improved. We now started to talk to each other, to set up joint uh, lectures, joint practical trainings to the benefit of the program. So this is just only to show you, we also have what we call skills lab. Uh, so by simulation, for example, with a puppet here, they can train, which they should not start training on the patient. And with the skills which they develop by injection, by, by examination, by looking for heartbeats and, 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 and so on and so on, they learn how to, to, they learn the skills which they then can apply really to the patient. We do have a communication and interaction training for medical students. That means we have actors. We have a group of actors, very skilled actors, who are trained in symptoms of certain diseases. 
and they they pretend to be patients. So the students are coming. They have to do their medical history. They have to examine them. And those patients, those actors, they are not really patients. They behave sometimes even better than the patients. They can really show symptoms. It's unbelievable. And so this is a very good training before or aside the students come to the first patient. And then we have the PBL interactive seminars, uh, as you can see. So then, what was the official reactions after we had started and implemented in 2001? It was recognized the great financial and personal resources spent, and I should not uh, hide that we, the faculty, paid a huge amount of money to change the facilities, to get counseling, to introduce new aspects, rooms, and uh, materials, and so on and so on. It was huge amount of money. Eisenberg has, well, this is from the press or from the Scientific Council of the German uh, Republic. You know, we have a Scientific Council who moves around to evaluate all faculties from time to time, and their judgment is the system. He said Eisenberg is one of the most comprehensive approaches to modernize clinical teaching in Germany and has thus established a unique profile in medical teaching in addition to its scientific profile, which can serve and really has served as a model for Germany. So we started, there was a new legal re uh, regulation and in, came into force in 2003 and we knew it already and had anticipated this. In 2004 we got an award of the Ministry of Science and the accreditation of the so-called train the trainer program, so teaching the lecturers was in 2005 and we extended it program tremendously in 2006 and now by 2010 I just returned three weeks ago, I had organized the meanwhile 18th faculty trained the trainer program, again with 40 lecturers and professors uh, which were attending. So this were uh, the award which was received uh, here, this was the best time dean of the medical faculty, and the student dean, and these were all the colleagues, and this was the rector of the university at that time, and this was the minister. So the realization, how did it? Did it Modification of organizational structure of the faculty was important. Introduction of quality insurance or assurance measures, measures to ensure communication and networking, strategies to ensure sustainability so that it's not just uh, fire for two weeks uh, or two years and it goes down, and then measures to increase this curriculum's acceptance and the value of education. So, what are the, uh, let's say, the, the organizational uh, Structure. Yes, I have a question now? Yeah. Have, okay, thank you. Uh, I was wondering, you said uh, you turned into PBL, uh, uh, but uh, from the explanation of the program, you said you have like blocks and they go from pathology, immunology. Uh, I couldn't understand yeah. how do you do this uh, yeah. because you the integration is not yeah. very simple. We, we don't, uh, this was just a subject and within all of the subjects we have PBL inter integrated. It's not that we have a PBL curriculum, like for example in Maastricht, Maastricht in Netherlands, but we integrate the PBL for us as a method, okay. and not the philosophy by itself. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. So the, uh, the structures which are behind, which allow the communication is that we have the Dean of Student Affairs, where the Faculty Council and the Dean, we have a Commission for Student Affairs, and we have a representative role of one of these major blocks of education for each year. And they they have interaction, they all are surrounded by a group of all the different subjects. So for example, I at the same time I run the third year to coordinate and I have ten professors beside me representing pathology, microbiology, biology, pharmacology, biometrics and so on and so on. And all of these colleagues uh, who are in the so-called inner circle, they have, uh, are surrounded by those who run actually the business every day in the different subjects. And so we meet regularly in a big commission for medical curriculum, especially in the beginning, and but meanwhile also, uh, let's see, at least once every two or one, once a month. And we discuss how the curriculum <coughs> continues. And here, of course, is also the interaction to the clinic, to the labs, <coughs> What do we do as quality <coughs> assurance measures? We have cooperation and we still continue, although not in a, such an extent as the beginning with the other medical, international, academy for adult education. 
we are not trained in everything as medical <coughs> teachers and the medical uh, uh, scientists. So we seek the help of those who are really knowledgeable in education beyond medicine. And we have uh, the so-called Alliance of Regional Teaching Academies in the state of Bad Württemberg. So all these universities, they form an alliance and they have a committee who runs, uh, let's say, some general aspects for the entire state. We, as I mentioned, we have a teacher training program. <coughs> now we have trained already 600 faculty members. So 600, they have already undergone and uh, one or two weeks education in medical uh, education, in medical uh, modern teaching. We have, besides, because we consider this very important, in addition done uh, a short training in PPL, for meanwhile more than 520 faculty members. We have this for the event with communication, the regular meetings in the so-called circle, and we evaluate, of course, and we have an internal and external evaluation, which is very important, and uh, we do it on a regular basis. So, the, teach, the teacher program is twice a year, one week and two days on a retreat, and we have permanent workshops, work groups working on the assessment issue in a center of competence for the state, evaluation group, media training, learning objectives, and so on and so on. And we have an e-learning platform, which is called Athena, on our uh, 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 web platform. So the teacher, teacher program is mandatory for something, uh, for, the, uh, for the career to become a professor. In Germany, in difference to the Anglo-Saxon system, after we have received our PhD, we have to work for five to 10 years seriously on a on scientific project, we have to accumulate a huge amount of publication international, and then we have to write a second big thesis. And in earlier times, it was just sufficient to get what we call private docent, a kind of associate professor. But then, with this program, we introduced that those who want to continue this career, they have to show that they got a training in medical education. And it has to be proved by certificate. So this was integrated in the requirements. And then we have a special course, further for a state certificate in medical education. So then we continued after we had success, been successful in our program uh, in uh, with the Heidelberg Medical Faculty. We did 18 times in teaching, but we did it also with participants and universities of Hungary, Slovenia, in China recently, and in another German, uh, two actually, uh, Hamburg and Dresden. And then in, uh, we had a program within the EU, European Union, this Bosnia-Herzegovina, medical faculties down in the southeast of Europe, and then recently, as mentioned, with our partner university, the Tonji Medical College in Wuhan, which, by the way, was founded by Germans 100 years ago. So the evaluation cycle is that we have a sheet, computer-based, <coughs> where they can all uh, the students can uh, give their opinion on each individual lecture, training program, and so on. And this is then uh, collected uh, by a group who is responsible for this. And this is then summarized in a word document, a teacher's view. So here are some general questions asked to the students indicating how they are ranking, and here are three commands which you can return to the to the teachers. So, for example, what was good, what was medium, and what was really bad. So, and this is then, of course, turned uh, for for, uh, for improvement. And uh, we, as a committee and the dean, looks at it. And if uh, one of the professors or lecturers is continuously being in this field, then he is asked for an interview. So. This is the evaluation results before we started, and you have to see here, this is 100%, this is 0%, and this has different criteria. Before is blue, and after is red. And this was the uh, summary of the evaluation of the student and also of, uh, of an external committee. So in support of examination techniques, support in history taking, lecture contact with students, practical relevance, content coordination, quality in education, and so on. And you can easily see even from the back, this was quite poor in the beginning. 
only the competition between students was considered very high, which is actually negative. There should be not a competition. So and it's uh, really significantly increased over the time. So now we continue to have this faculty develop, uh, development program in what we call individualized application of teaching, communication and practice leadership, postgraduate teaching and supervising PhD. We have different programs on this, motivation and professionalism assessment and supervising scientific writing. In learning theory, teacher's role in teaching and learning. And uh, this is given all in these different steps to uh, become a, it's almost a master of medical <coughs> education. So the spheres of competence are considered not only the professional competence, but also methodological competence, social competence, and of course the competence in being able for a self-guided, lifelong personal learning. So this is covered by the basic program of IcoMate, but then we have also in addition a so-called mentoring tutoring program where we have small groups of professors and uh, students interacting. And this should all promote what we consider lifelong personal learning. So the core, core programs, there are a couple of these different things, what they learn in the different years. And then in addition, and this is something which I personally like very much, I did also contribute to the development, we form so-called scientific communities. I mentioned in the very beginning that our university is very much science-oriented. So by uh, applying to this, we had a group of professors who are all working in one direction, one research field. Just if I take my so, uh, community here, which is immunology, and these are famous immunologists, or other people in multidisciplinary oncology, brain, body, spirit, heart circulation, endocrinology, transplantation, primary healthcare. So it covers many very interesting interdisciplinary fields in medical <coughs> science. And we have, let's say, I have a group of uh, 10 to 15 professors of uh, almost 10 or 12 different immunology-oriented departments, either in basic sciences, or in applied sciences or in the clinic, <coughs> and we ask those students who are very much interested beyond the curriculum in this very field to join us and we set up a specific uh, program of education in this specialty. And this is actually the pool for us for the best doctoral PhD fellows which we can now take off of this pool. So if I finish now, we have built up a kind of building which we call constructive alignment so that we go along a certain line which has a content, didactic, technique, integration, but we have blended learning. That means how can we integrate e-learning into in-person teaching and what's about the teaching methods? There should be, uh, uh, let's say, uh, developed according to the learning objectives. And nothing does work if we do not have a proper assessment. So thank you very much. I know this has been quite a bit of information, and I'm quite sure that uh, many things of you are absolutely clear, and we do the same here in uh, Khartoum, or in other faculties in Sudan, and, uh, but there may be one or two things which we do differently, and of course I'm very open to questions and for a vivid discussion we can have now. I think the best uh, term would be the interface. Okay. You know, uh, the pathology is in the third year. It starts in the third year. Mm -hmm. Of course, it's based on anatomy and so on. And then it's uh, again coming back and back again, the so-called uh, special pathology, which goes along with the clinical next to the year. But uh, let's say the basics are formed in the third year. And microbiology, to answer this question, is done 
again, also in the third year, because you need this basic science to apply to the clinic. And then in the last year, we have something which we call infectiology, and this includes not only human <coughs> but also microbiology and biology with all the clinical applications. Thank you, Max, for the mind and elegant presentation. Good afternoon. I would like to know for the faculty of Ohio before ranking or writing by the student. What do you do for that? This was before. Yeah. Yeah, and I think now after 10 years, I showed you the difference between the previous ranking. If somebody is not, not coping with this and has a problem with communication, the team of people with this, what shall we do? Check it into the lab and do it there there or train him or what do you do in your know, You think uh, <coughs> if we meet a student who does not agree with the curriculum or who does poor in this curriculum, what you do personally with this student? No, I mean that the teacher itself. Faculty. Mm -hmm. the staff. Oh, oh, the staff. Yeah. Yeah. Um, as I mentioned first, um, since we have different levels of responsibility, for example, if one of the professors or lecturers, which is in the third year where I am as a coordinator, particularly responsible because it's also the year where I teach technology, then I ask and I get this evaluation sheet, I ask this person to come to my office and I have a discussion with him. Uh, but I'm not the dean of the faculty, so I can only I will give him a recommendation very friendly and then I say, we will watch you because we get every week or every second week we got this evaluation sheet and we will see if you are improving. On the other side, we, I would strongly recommend to you to visit the next train, the trainer program, so the teacher's training program, which we have twice a year, uh, to go through this program, and then we meet again. And usually this helps. Then they are improving. If this is not the case, then I report to the dean and say, listen, dear colleague, there's another colleague who doesn't obey our regulations, our agreement, please talk to him. <laughs> Not, you know, uh, I have to, to tell that it actually uh, very occasionally comes to this next step. Usually, uh, if you go into a serious discussion with the colleagues, you find an agreement, and then you find it later in the evaluation that they really do better. Yes, it starts within the curriculum because our medical students, by the tradition, they start their PhD thesis already during the curriculum while they are still part of it, but not side by side because they interrupt and then they go to the laboratory, to the clinic, start their, 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 their studies in their MD PhD thesis. And then uh, they continue later when they are finished or in the last part of the study side by side. And how do they do that? Do you teach them the assessment of the research? Yes, this is a little bit different. This is not a full PhD program as you know from the Anglo-Saxon system. But we provide them with those methods already in this what I call the uh, mentoring tutoring program from the very first day of their studies. So besides their basic curriculum in medicine, they, they uh, get special training uh, programs in, for example, uh, 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 databases for references, uh, uh, presentation of scientific results, scientific writing, setting up experiments according to their fields, how to prepare for, uh, let's say, a doctoral thesis. So they get it over the time, they get the skills which are usually condensed in a PhD program. Dr. Thank you very much. Uh, I'd like to thank you for this and sharing this experience with us because it's really very impressive that how you manage uh, to handle resistance while you were at the top university and also you have all this history of 600 years so the resistance must be very huge i can understand uh, what was very impressive and maybe i wanted to clarify to you if you can clarify it more did students actually ask for pbs did they start the process <coughs> change yeah. 
this was, was a very interesting fact, and actually it was a little shame for us as a professor, that it came from students 